753, 755 and 710 cable glands. The 753 cable gland comprises six major components, these being the back nut, middle nut, clamping ring, spigot, brass pot and entry component complete with red deluge seal. This gland is suitable for use with armoured marine shipboard, jacketed and non-jacketed cables for Class 1 Division 1 locations offshore. The 755 cable gland comprises six major components similar to the 753 cable gland and is suitable for use with wire armoured jacketed cable as permitted by the NEC for Class 1 Division 2 locations. The 710 cable gland comprises five major components and is similar to the 753 and 755 cable glands, except that the armour clamping ring and spigot is replaced by a non-armour spigot. The cable gland is suitable for use with non-armour jacketed cables as permitted by the NEC for Class 1 Division 2 locations. Assembly instructions are supplied with each cable gland. Please refer to these for further instructions on cable preparation and installation. Cable preparation 753, 755 and 710 Allow sufficient length of cable to enable termination of the conductors into the junction box. Strip back and remove the outer sheath and armour or braid and inner sheath of the cable to expose the inner conductors. Ensure that all fillers are removed for example, plastic tapes, strings, and so on. Remove a further three quarters of an inch or 20 millimeters of outer cable sheath for cable glands from sizes OS to A. One inch, 25 millimeters for cable glands from B to C2. One and a quarter inches or 32 millimeters for cable glands from D to F. The process of exposing the armour isn't required for the 710 cable gland, as this cable gland is only suitable for use with non-armour jacketed cable. Cable gland installation 753, 755 and 710 Fit the ingress protection or IP washer, if required, onto the entry component. Screw the entry component into the junction box and hand tighten. Using a spanner or wrench, tighten until resistance is felt, a quarter to a half turn nominal. Remove the brass pot. Place the back nut, middle nut and clamping ring over the cable with the thickest part of the ring towards the back of the cable gland. Spread the armour by gently pulling it away from the inner sheath of the cable. A screwdriver may be required for larger sized cables. Push the cable through the armour spigot and locate the spigot under the armour until the ends are against the shoulder of the armour spigot. Bring up the armour clamping ring and locate on the armour or braid. Push the cable into the entry component, then bring up the middle nut and hand tighten onto the entry portion. Finalise by tightening the middle nut by a further half to three quarters of a turn with a spanner or wrench to make off the armour clamping assembly. Unscrew the middle nut from the entry component and visually inspect that the armour has been effectively clamped between the armour spigot and the armour clamping ring. The make-off of the armour isn't required for the 710 cable gland as this cable gland is only suitable for use with non-armour jacketed cable. Mix the compound found in the two plastic bags until they blend together into one solid colour with no streaks. Once mixed, apply to the conductors within 30 minutes, as after this time the compound will begin to stiffen as the curing process begins. Remove the cable from the entry and spread out the cable cores to enable the compound to be packed into the crotch of the cable. Close the conductors together and bind the ends with tape. Apply compound around and in between the cable conductors, extending to no more than 35 millimeters up the cable. Ensure all voids and gaps are filled. Pass the brass compound pot over the conductors and push down until it engages onto the spigot of the armor clamp. Remove all surplus compound from the top of the pot and the joint faces. 
push the cable into the entry and locate the compound pot inside the entry. Then bring up the middle nut and hand tighten onto the entry. A handy tip is to apply the surplus compound onto the outer sheath of the cable in close proximity to the cable gland. This can be tested periodically to ensure the compound is hard before finalizing the termination into the equipment. Once the compound has cured, untighten the middle nut and check that the compound has cured properly. The process of installing the compound for the 710 is similar to that of 753 and 755 cable glands, except that the compound spigot must be held in position whilst the installation process is completed. Hand tighten the middle nut onto the entry component and tighten by half a turn with a spanner or wrench. Hand tighten the back nut onto the middle nut to form a seal around the outer sheath of the cable. Using one spanner or wrench, hold the middle nut in position whilst finalizing the tightening of the back nut by a further complete turn with another spanner or wrench. Complete the installation by pulling the deluge seal down onto the middle nut if applicable. The 753, 755 or 710 cable gland has now been correctly installed.